Today on Cruise Man's Garage, we're installing these Pathfinder LED multifunction fog lights onto this 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour. These LEDs are unique because they offer a DRL only setting, a DRL with a super bright fog light setting, and a strobe light effect. You can easily swap out your Honda fog lights for these more capable multifunction LEDs because they use the same mounting hardware and built-in Honda OEM switch. This installation can take three to four hours, so please be patient. A link to the Pathfinder LED installation instructions can be found in the description of this video. It's a good idea to lay out all of the hardware and get it organized before installation. The two lamp assemblies included in the kit are identical except for the wiring harness. The left side lamp will have this additional CIP wire. Place your motorcycle on the center stand. Fold the mirrors toward the rear of the bike. If you have upper air deflectors installed, you'll need to remove them. Remove the two 5mm bolts that hold the upper air deflectors in place. Remove the upper air deflector with the collars attached and set them aside. Remove the 5mm Allen screw that holds the arm panel in place. Then remove the plastic arm panel. The rear view mirrors are held in place with two 8mm hex bolts. Remove these using a ratchet and a socket. And here you can see the connector. And if I pull up on it, it should disconnect or release. So let's try that. It's a little tricky because you have to hold the mirror with one hand. There we go. Part of that connector, you see this little this little tab right there, if you lift up on that, and it's, it's fortunately it's a very weak tab, it's not very strong, so it doesn't take much. Open both saddlebag doors and remove both of the side cover panels. Disconnect the heated seat connector on the right side of the motorcycle in front of the saddlebag. Remove the 6mm Allen bolts and washers on each side of the seat at the very front. Masking tape can be used to prevent paint damage during seat removal. You begin by releasing the two nylon pins at the front of the seat. Pull up firmly on both sides at the same time. Then, begin working the seat forward and up, making sure that the connector is free. Okay, to remove this inner cowl, I want to show you where it is. If you're looking at the front of the bike, I'm looking, I'm on the actual, on the right side of the bike. You can see here, it's this plastic piece, and it runs all the way, and then it actually runs up here, um, up a little higher, so it's all one piece. And it's held in place with two screws and f uh, six clips, I believe. So there's one screw here and one screw here. These are five millimeter Allen screws. And then we have a body clip here, a body clip here, a body clip here. There's three there. And then it's hard for me to get this camera back there and the light and everything, but there's, there's one right back here and then there are two up here. Can you see those? Up there and up there. And the top one 
is actually easier to get out from above the bike looking down next to the handlebars. This one, the bottom one, you can get out from here, but the top one is easier to get out from above. Just go down through the uh, tunnel next to the handlebars and you'll be able to get that clip out. So I'm going to remove this and then we'll take a look at it once we get it out. The deflector panel, shown here, is held in place with two 5mm screws and a series of clips along the edge of the panel, both on the inside and the outside edge. Once you've removed the two 5mm screws that hold the deflector in place, you can begin to release the clips. I like to start at the bottom. And if you just pull on this black plastic, it's rather flimsy and malleable. You can, you can sort of remove these clips. And you'll hear some noise when you're doing it. Don't be concerned. That's just normal. You can see the clips here. Now, you're going to do this on both sides of the bike. And you also want to, once you're finished, release this body clip uh, from the shelter. On the inside of the middle cowl, just in front of the radiator, you'll find another body clip that must also be removed. Remove the 5mm screw at the top of the middle cowl. If you look at the back side of the cowl, you can see the pins that are used to fit into the grommets on the bike and these will be removed first. You can also see the series of plastic clips along the edge that hold the upper part of the cowl into place. Here you can see the location of the two body clips that hold the middle cowl into place. And here are the two mounting points for the two 5mm screws that hold the middle cowl. It's important to take note of this positioning pin at the very front of the cowl on the pointed part, and that fits into a hole on the front of the bike just underneath the headlight. And that's why we start removing this cowl from the back, not from the front. You don't want to break that pin or that hole. I like to start by releasing the grommet at the bottom, at the bottom of the radiator grill, and then start working those grommets out at the back pointed end of the shelter as I'm doing here. And then you'll start pulling those clips loose and trust me, it will be loud when they come loose. Okay, this step actually goes before we take out all these screws. We need to undo this connector right here. And there's a little tab on the back. It's actually on a it's just on a little stay. So basically what you want to do is you just want to un, you just want to press that little tab in. I'll show it to you here in a second. And you just slide it back off of this little, this little uh, holder here. And if you look on the back of this, you can see this little tab that you press in. You see how you press that in? Now we also are going to need to remove this other little, this little clip right here which is holding another cable that we need access to because this is also attached to a piece that we're going to be removing. So we're going to get some needle nose pliers. You just kind of press in on these two sides and it will push or pull right through that hole right there. Okay, there's another connector, a two pin connector back here and it's on another one of those little stays, those little clips. And there's a tab on the back side that we have to get to to release it. It comes up and we need to get that uh, released as well. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it a little better. See this clip right? This is the uh, connector and the little tab is going to be underneath. It's hard to get the light in there. Sorry about the voice. Okay, we have to remove this little pocket cable and it's clipped into this metal bracket. So we're going to pop this out and once we do that, we can come down here and get the little, the little ball to release, I think. There we go. 
See how that cable comes right out? Remove the two 5mm Allen screws from the base of the top shelter. Remove the 5mm Allen screws and collars from the top front of the shelter. They're just under the speakers. Okay, there's two more body clips, or what I call rivets, and they're kind of right down here inside this tunnel. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's so dark right there. Now, I'm trying to use my phone to get a picture of that. But we got to remove those two. You can see where they are here, kind of behind the handlebars. There's another body clip kind of hidden toward the back of the top shelter on the inside wall. And uh, it's hard to see, but you need to get that out as well. With all the body clips and screws removed, you can then carefully begin releasing all of the other plastic clips that hold in the top shelter and carefully remove it as shown. Remove this center uh, control panel. And to do that, we've got these two screws, one on each side, you can see here. There's also some little uh, body clips. Let me get over here, there might be more light. There's one on each side, just right in front of these uh, screws that have to come out. Okay, we have to disconnect these connectors right here. And basically, I'm just going to slip that one off of that little tab there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, now once I get that apart, I can just slip this right back on there because I don't need that. This one I can get to right here. I'm just going to mash this little gray tab. I should be able to pull up on it and get it to come out. There we go. Okay, the other two connectors that we have to disconnect are on the left side of the bike, right in front of the glove box. I've, I've got the camera so that you can't see the glove box because the white against the black causes it makes it harder to see the black parts. So here's one right here. We've got a little tab where you're going to press in here and we'll pull up on it and it should come loose. It did just like the other one. Okay, so that one's loose now. And then there's another one down here, kind of buried down here. Looks like it's on one of those little, those little um, frame stays as well. So let's get it out. I know it's hard for you to see because my hands are in the way. But now it's off the frame. And this is the hardest one to get to so far because the little tab is going to be way down. Here we go. Now I've got it out where I can see it. And there's the little tab right there. Mash down on that. And we should be able to pull that apart. There it comes. It's just a little tight. Okay. So now we have all four connectors disconnected. So you got to check all your cables here and make sure everything is Coming along with it, here's these two, because they're kind of underneath some of the little... See, there's two of the cables right there, and I'm going to check the other side. Okay, as it turns out, I think at the factory, they actually put this last cable behind another cable that they didn't need to, made it a little harder to get out. Uh, what I did is I actually loosened the rubber strap holding on the ECU, and let it just hang out a little bit, and that gave me a little more room to work. You might find you have to do the same thing on the left side. So now that all the cables are undone... Please pay very close attention to how to remove the center console from your motorcycle. The center console is held in place by a nylon pin clip, and you'll notice in the front there's a small protrusion. It looks like a little fin. And when the console slips down over this clip and slides backward, that fin holds the front of the console secure and in place. To properly remove the console, you need to straddle the motorcycle. Don't attempt to do this while you're standing on the left or the right side. Grip the console firmly with both hands, then slide it forward 
and then pull up straight up towards you firmly with both hands at the same time. Okay, now we're gonna turn this over. And when we do, I want you to see these four screws because these have to come out. They hold these little gray trim pieces on and those have to come out so that we can get access to the switches. With all four screws removed, you can then begin pulling the uh, side pieces away from the body. There are a few clips that hold it in place. You just pull on it and they will come loose. Now we'll need to remove these two screws and then we need to pull off this uh, kind of black polished garnish that we have here. So let's get these two screws out. Now these are even these are even smaller than the last two we took out from the back of that other part. Oh, that one just comes right off. Well, maybe not. There may be something up here holding it. Let me see. Yeah, there's a little strange little clip up here. There we go. It just kind of pops right out. So that that one actually comes off pretty easily. With the garnish removed, this is what we're looking at. Now you can tell I've already installed the home link buttons down at the bottom, but we're going to replace this center button with the fog light uh, button. And to do that, we need to remove this one single Phillips screw down at the base, and the uh, dummy or the blank will just pull right out. Now we're ready to install the fog light button, as you can see here, and it only goes in one way. There's a uh, a little bit of an indention at the top of the button and that goes in toward the top of the console and it just slips right down into that opening and once it does it locks into place and then you can see you can just press it on and off like a button. Now you can reassemble the console piece uh, in reverse order. Basically just reinstall the garnish and then put the side pieces back on and we're ready to reinstall this back on the motorcycle. Now it's time to replace and reinstall all the parts we've removed up to this point. You need to do it in this particular order. If you want really in-depth step-by-step -step instructions on how to install or remove these various parts, check out my 2018 Plus Honda Goldwing maintenance videos. I'll put a link down in the description for you to get more information. The fog light covers are held in place with two 5mm Allen bolts. Go ahead and remove these using a 5mm Allen wrench and then pull out to remove the fog light covers. The lower cowl is held in place with two 5mm Allen bolts, one on the front and one at the rear. Using a 5mm Allen wrench, remove these bolts and then pull the cowl out from the top and the bottom, releasing the pins that hold it into place. The lower inner cowl is held in place with four 5mm Allen bolts, two of which are shown here. There's also a plastic boss that fits into a rubber grommet on the frame. The front lower cowl is held in place with two 8mm bolts, one on each side of the motorcycle. Go ahead and remove these and set the front lower cowl off to the side. We'll need to modify the fog light covers by removing the round blank that is in the center and I use these little uh, wire cutters to just kind of snip out those little tabs that hold this round cover in place. Uh, they're a pretty soft plastic, so you can just cut right through those little tabs. And once you've done that for all the tabs, uh, it'll just fall right out. Now, it's a good idea to clean up any leftover plastic uh, shavings using a little file or whatever method you want to use just to kind of clean it up a little bit. And now we're ready to install the foam cushion that comes in your fog light kit. And you basically just install it per the Honda instructions, 
kind of go around in a circle uh, as shown. You'll notice two large holes on each side of the mounting brackets and we need to insert these rubber grommets into these openings. I'm using some dishwashing soap here just because it makes it a little bit slicker and easier to get those grommets to go into those openings. Now here I'm putting the second grommet in and then you can see what the bracket looks like uh, once both grommets are in. You can wipe off the soap of course and make sure you do this for both brackets and all four grommets. Now we're ready to install the vertical adjustment bracket to the back of the fog light assembly. Insert one of the M6 by 16 millimeter bolts. That's the next to the smallest flange bolt in the kit and insert it through the hole and I like to go ahead and put the spacer on and then just slip that little nut on the end of that bolt. You don't want to tighten it down, just get a couple of threads started. Then you can slip that nut into the well on the top of the fog lamp assembly as shown. And this is what it should look like. Now you can tighten this uh, bolt down. You don't need it super tight right now. You can use a Phillips screwdriver or a 10 millimeter wrench. Here's the, the left side lamp assembly. You'll notice the bracket goes to the opposite side. And now locate the bracket with the L stamped on the inside. And we're going to go in and insert this bracket as shown. Now I call this a bracket. I think they refer to it as a stay in the instructions. But you want it, you'll know you have it in the correct position when all the little holes line up. Uh, there are some threaded holes on the side of the lamp assembly, and you're going to install these little flange collars on the inside of the bracket tabs and get those to slip down over that lamp assembly before you install the little screws. There's four little screws that come in the kit. You're going to use two of them on each lamp assembly. Here's the screw with the washer and you basically line it up and install that in the threaded hole on the lamp assembly as shown and then go ahead and tighten it down good and you'll put both of those in. Now we're going to use the M6 by 12 millimeter flange bolt to install into the vertical adjuster bracket. There's a welded on nut on the back and you just install this as shown. And this one you just uh, want to barely tighten because we're going to adjust this later. And of course you want to repeat this entire installation of the bracket on the right side lamp assembly as well. Next, we're going to use these cable ties that have the little clips on the back, and you can basically just go ahead and get them started. And we're going to feed the wires through this, and that little clip fits into a square hole on the back of the bracket. Actually, it's a rectangular hole, and you just snap it down in there, and that'll hold it in place. And then feed the wires through as shown, and then, you know, you don't want it super, super tight but uh, it just keeps the wires up and out of the way in the correct position and then just uh, tighten off the cable tie and then you can of course trim off the end the excess of that cable tie if you look at the wire harness that comes in your kit you'll notice that a couple of the connectors have these slots on top and that's to use these little holder clips now these holder clips will be used later uh, with cable ties where we'll tie these up to the uh, other harnesses on the motorcycle. But go ahead and slip these clips in place now. Now I'm going to start installing the left side lamp assembly on the left side of the motorcycle by putting the flange collars into those rubber grommets uh, per the instructions. The, the one on top goes on top and the one on the side goes kind of on the inside of the uh, grommet. And the easiest way to install this lamp assembly is to go ahead and install the bolt for the side first. Now, there's two bolts remaining in your kit. We want the shorter of the two, which is the 20 millimeter. And it goes into the hole on the frame as shown. 
and then you can slip that bracket over it on the side and then use one of the flange nuts in the kit uh, and you basically just want, you don't need this super tight yet because we're going to rotate this lamp assembly up once we install the pipe bands. But go ahead and get this little flange nut started and uh, just keep it loose for now. With the lamp assembly in place, you can now route this uh, wire harness behind the frame member as shown so that uh, it's kind of out of the way and ready to be connected up later. Now you're ready to install the pipe band. Uh, you can, of course, rotate the lamp assembly kind of down and out of the way to do this to give you a little more room to work. And once you get that all hooked together, you can then slip that pipe band over toward the inside of the motorcycle and just position it so that when you rotate the lamp assembly up, your uh, flange and your grommet line up. And then use the last bolt we have in the kit, which is the longest one, the 25 millimeter, and insert that down uh, and tighten it down into the welded on nut on the pipe band. Now you can go ahead and tighten both of these bolts uh, on the side and on the top. Next we need to fish the CIP wire back to the fuse box and I'm using a 36 inch cable tie but you could use a coat hanger or a stiff wire and I'm going to run it between the frame behind the engine kind of as shown here and I'm going to run it back to the uh, rear of the motorcycle you can kind of see how it goes there and I'm just going to tape my uh, wire my CIP wire to the end of this uh, cable tie which is what I'm using to fish the wire through and you may have to fish this through a few times to get it to go through but then just simply a matter of pulling that wire straight that you can kind of see how I'm going on the inside of the frame there. And then it pulls out through the back. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this little engine side cover. It just pops off with a few grommets that hold it in place because I think it's easier to run the wire back to the fuse box. You'll notice these three grommets that hold this little engine side cover in place. And it just snaps on, snaps off real simple. Now I'm going to use my fish to go up through right next to the fuse box. You can see it there on the right. And I'm just going to pull my wire straight on through. And then I can use a cable tie to kind of attach the wire to this existing cable that's uh, already above the uh, alternator there. And just kind of keep it up and out of the way. And snip off the excess. And then I can replace my engine cover later. It's simple to do. Now remove the fuse box cover and remove the top screw, which is the positive terminal for the accessory terminal. Now it's just a matter of using the same screw and washers to attach this uh, CIP wire to the top accessory terminal on your fuse box. Once you've done that, you can replace the fuse box cover and move on to the next step. Now we're ready to install the right side lamp assembly and it installs almost the same as the left side. Go ahead and feed the wires behind the frame member as you see here. And then line up the bracket. Start with the side bolt. Uh, put the little flange nut on. Just kind of hold it in place. And then we'll install the uh, little pipe band to hold the top bolt in place. It basically works just like the other side. Now here I'm using a 10 millimeter wrench to hold that uh, flange nut in place while I use the screwdriver uh, to tighten it down. And you get a little more leverage with a wrench than you do with a screwdriver. And once the bolts are tight, you'll notice you can still move the lamp assembly up and down a little bit. That's so we can adjust the lights later. If you look at the front of the engine down toward the bottom, you'll find the dummy plug for the fog lamp assembly. We need to press in on that tab and remove that little dummy plug. It's a good idea to wipe off this connector just to make sure it's clean. Now we want to take the wiring harness that comes in your kit and we want to connect it as shown to the wire harness on the bike and then grab the wire harness that comes from the right fog lamp assembly and we're going to connect those two connectors to the wire harness. 
These connectors will only fit together one way, so it's pretty hard to screw it up. Now we want to use one of the cable ties that come in the kit, and you slip it through that little holder clip we installed earlier. And then you're basically going to tie it up to the motorcycle wire harness just to kind of hold it in place, keep it from flopping around. And then, of course, as always, just trim off the excess of that, of that cable tie. Here I'm installing another cable tie to kind of route the harness over to the left side of the motorcycle. You want to refer to the instructions to see all of the places uh, to install these cable ties. Now we're going to hook up the left side lamp assembly to the wire harness. Both connectors, the little white one and the black connector. And of course, once you have these connected, you want to use another cable tie on this side uh, to tie everything up, keep it out of the way. Turn the motorcycle ignition switch on and press that fog light button and make sure the little light comes on on the dash showing that the fog lights are on and of course make sure the fog lights are illuminated. If the lights are working you can reinstall all of these parts in this particular order. It's very important that you do it in the correct order. Now if you want more detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to remove and install all of these different parts check out my 2018 Honda Goldwing maintenance videos. I'll put a link in the description down below so you can get more information. Okay, so here we have the uh, fog lights on with the DRLs, full power. Now I'm going to turn these off and you'll see the difference. You'll notice the difference in light on the sign up ahead and even on those houses in the background. So these fog lights do cast uh, some light beyond the headlight. So I'm going to turn them back on again so you can see all together. Okay, so there you can see the difference in the amount of light that's uh, being cast. It's got a lot of fill light in the foreground between the front of the bike and where the headlights kind of start lighting up the road.